So I'd like to share here some thoughts about strategy that I haven't really seen shared anywhere else. Um, I do like the pawn to queen four and running the queen pawn opening. And I do think that a very acceptable strategy is to try and be the one who gets an early queen, even though it is, of course, no guarantee of success. Now, of course, I allowed a check there, but that check was pretty harmless. Um, and really, mm, red annoys me here for no particular purpose for a little while and interferes with my opening strategy, which is always a possibility. You can't stop somebody from deciding they're going to interfere with your opening strategy. But I thought if nobody else is going to run to the center, then I will. And it's good that yellow and green are having a little bit of a, mm, well, Yellow's looking like he may distract green from green's run to the center, especially after that move. So now I'm beginning to get really hopeful I might actually get a queen early. And even, as I say, that's not necessarily a good strategy for beginners, and I don't always do it. Often, I mean, king safety is more important than getting a queen. That's, there's no doubt about that at all. So... Green has now stopped me from queening my pawn immediately, but I'm quite happy with the result here. Now I can get on with developing pieces. And yellow, yellow continues to distract green for a while here, which is very useful for me. Seeing as if, if they get really distracted, I can just push my pawn when green won't have a chance to take the queen. And eventually I do get uh, I do get to be the first person to have a significant pawn presence in the center. Now what to do about the king side and how to develop pieces is a bit of a mess at the moment. So I decided to play it. Not a particularly good move, but I felt like stopping the bishop check. It's always a good idea to prevent any checks even though that check would give up a bishop from red, which is hardly worth worrying about. I just want to move. And now I'm starting a pawn storm on the queen side, which uh, development is not so important in four player chess as it is in normal chess. King safety and queen safety and uh, pawn safety, having, having a the ability to have some long range threats is really good to be able to take advantage of uh, when somebody else is vulnerable for a moment, you want to be able to strike. So seeing as I can't develop my king side yet, my king seems to be pretty safe in the center. I decide that I might as well run the king pawn as well. Everything's fairly safe at the moment, however, Yellow does point out a disadvantage of that momentarily, and I do get into a bit of trouble here because the king pawn isn't backed up by a queen like the queen pawn is. So now I have a question of how do I defend my pawn, and I was in a bit of a rush, and I don't think I did it in the right way. I'm not sure what the right way was. Possibly, hmm, don't know. All the ways of defending it have disadvantages. Possibly I should have, yeah. The disadvantage of what I did there is that my queen pawn's no longer defended. And if red decided to attack it with a knight, I would have a real question of, well, what am I going to do? Give up my queen pawn that I've spent so much time pushing. So fortunately for me, red did not do that. And he didn't, yeah, I, I, red should definitely have attacked my queen pawn with a knight then. Red doesn't seem to have much idea what he's doing in the opening here. So now that uh, yellow doesn't have a queen check on king four, which would have been very annoying. Now I suppose I could have pushed it last move, but that queen check, if it hadn't, when my knight was on knight one and it wasn't losing a queen, could have been disastrous for me if, if red then started taking things. So... I'm very happy that red and green also had a little tussle over there. This is really good that 
uh, yellow and red have both had a little um, interaction with green there, thought about pushing the pawn immediately and decided, mm, I'm not really developed enough, I'd better do something else. So here we go. You know what, this has the advantage of backing up the king pawn uh, and stopping potential checks. Mm, it's a strange move. I think another reason I did it was just waiting. Sometimes it's good to wait because if you're not seen to be doing anything in particular and you're not a threat, people are more likely to focus on other people. But I think I was very lucky here that red and yellow, neither of them really seem to focus on me much, which is strange when I'm running my pawn to the center. Now, I didn't like that potential pin on my queen there. I didn't like the threat of him moving his knight and my knight being pinned to my queen. So I make a huge blunder and put my queen on king three, where red can just take it. And now we hold our breath and red doesn't take it. Phew! I survived my one big blunder of the game. Now I'm back to being okay again, and I've woken up enough not to put my queen on a square. And another thing in four-player chess is the people who get to 1600 generally learn how not to make huge blunders, how not to leave the possibility of people taking major things. I've still got a question here of how to stop yellow from attacking me, and I don't think I came up with a very good solution. I don't think that was a good move because of that attacking my queen. And uh, I get distracted again into moving my queen again. And mm, I think there must have been a better way to attack yellow's king using my bishop where it was on king's bishop one. And now we're all sort of reduced to waiting for a little while. There is a general strategy that's been talked about on the forum where You've got to protect yourself from the person on your left and the easiest person for you to attack is the one on the right. And I'm not sure why Yellow did that. I guess he was hoping that um, Red would take something, which he does. So Yellow actually sacrificed his bishop for a knight in order to get rid of both of my knights, which I'm not that unhappy about, really. It means that Yellow hasn't got as many pieces to attack me with. And I'm now safe again, reasonably. And what it did was give green the opportunity to queen while we were all busy. So I think yellow blundered then by taking my knight. It was just a random aggressiveness, which mm, I think at a certain strength you get beyond randomly taking things just to hope they'll work out good for you. Basically, peace swaps are not a good idea unless there's good logic behind why you're doing it. You should not swap pieces. I don't think yellow got enough for that uh, peace swap. So I'm glad that I'm consolidating here. I would have liked to have attacked yellow, but I felt that my king safety was more important and that once my king was safe, I'd then have a good opportunity to try and queen a pawn. And that's basically what happens in the next phase of the game. Green's probably going to have to move that queen, and once he does, it's going to be hard for anyone to stop my pawn from queening. And I've got two of them there, which if I'm very careful, I might be able to get to queen both of them. So even if you don't manage to queen a pawn early in the game, Having a major pawn presence in the center, if you can protect them, is very useful because when people get distracted, there's always the possibility that you will be able to queen. And the later in the game that happens, the better it is for you, really. Because there's, if it happens early in the game, there's a good chance people are going to gang up on you. And there's a good chance you can't, it's hard to protect all your queens at once. The person on your left will attack one and then then you're likely to lose something major. And I consider a queen to be only worth slightly more than a bishop anyway. Mm. 
So there you go. I've managed to queen a pawn while they weren't paying attention. Um, not sure whose job it was really to stop me. Probably Green shouldn't have allowed that. Green's got a queen in the centre and could have made more effort to stop me from getting one. But now we have this nice situation where Green and I can gang up on the other two. And there we go. I'm, uh, if they don't stop me, I'll queen another pawn. And then I'll be the potential object of attack. But my strategy once you've got a few queens these days is to have a good look at being able to swap one of them for a bishop or a rook or a queen, of course, just to get some points and to weaken somebody else, not to try to hang on to all your queens. So here I have the opportunity to get nine points for my first queen, and it's looking like I'm going to get another queen. It's hard for them to stop me. So I decide to go for it. I'm now ahead on points, and points are an extremely important part of the game. It doesn't happen in normal chess. If you get far enough ahead, you can almost guarantee you're going to come second, if not first. And this is another aspect of four-player chess, that if second prize is uh, not bad, really. You usually gain points when you come second. You've beaten two players and lost the third one, is the way the ratings works. So you've always got to keep in mind that if you can't win, you can at least come second. And if you're ahead on points, that becomes far more likely. And there's strategy involved in that, as you'll see later on. If you're ahead on points, you can do things you wouldn't be able to do otherwise, especially once you're more than 20 points ahead. And likewise, if you get too far behind. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is if you lose too many pieces, it doesn't really matter which pieces they are. You start off with seven active pieces. If you lose too many pieces, you find that you can't really do anything anymore. Likewise, if you lose too many pawns, you start to run out of the ability to queen pawns when there's the opportunity to. And I haven't heard anyone really talk about this, that, that the number of pieces you have left is important. So at the moment, I have, for instance, well, if you count my new queen, I have six pieces plus the king. Yellow has five pieces. Green has uh, seven pieces. And red has seven pieces. So I would say this is a good indication that yellow is in trouble. Also, red has seven pawns. Green has five pawns. Yellow has six. And I have six. So pawns are not that different. There's not that much of an imbalance in numbers of pawns and pieces at the moment. Now, if I leave my queen out on a square where it's easily attacked, yellow's likely to attack it, which he had a knight that could attack the next move, I think. So I didn't want to allow... You've got to put your queens on squares where the person to your left cannot easily attack them. Green just took one of yellow's pieces. I am very happy about that. The more they can swap off pieces, the better. And he's given me an opportunity to attack yellow, which... Do I do it now? Yes, I do. I decide that despite slightly weakening my king, I'm going to I'm going to join in green's attack on yellow. And this seems to work out fairly well for me. Note that yellow's pawn is pinned, so even if he takes my pawn with his knight, I just take his knight. And green continues the attack. Now, unfortunately, red distracted me from just taking the pawn, which I would have liked to have done. But that's a fairly safe square to put my queen on and attack yellow's knights. Yellow finds a good reply, saving his queen and protecting his knight. And green, I think green does something good again to continue the attack. Well, maybe we have a slight pause here in the attack. And what did green just do? Ah, green threatened to swap off queens his one-point queen for the nine-point queen. Another major strategy is people are reluctant to swap their nine-point queen for a one-point queen, and the new queens are only one-point queens. So in a way, the one-point queen is more powerful because 
uh, people are less likely to swap things for it. So you have this strange dynamic where a new queen is worth, to my mind, slightly more than an old queen. Now, while their queens are distracted, I decided to attack yellow. And yellow, I'm not sure if he really had to sacrifice his queen like that. But if he didn't, his king was getting opened up and he might have been getting mated. So maybe that was the best he had. I decided to keep red's kingside close, not to let red open his rook onto all these pieces. I want to keep red a bit bottled up because if he gets open there, he could, yeah, I'll have too much to pay attention to. I'd like to focus on this attack on yellow. And this works out quite well in the end too. So yellow saved his other knight, um, and green continues the attack, which I'm very happy about. Because if we can get rid of yellow, then I'm doing really well. And I just mated yellow. Isn't that nice? You've got to be very careful when you're attacking that you don't give somebody else the opportunity to deliver the mate. I just got 20 points because green checked him and I double checked him and made it impossible for him to get out of both the checks at once. So even though Green did most of the work, I got the 20 points. And I did it without risking my pieces because Yellow's dead and can't recapture my Queen. So Green made a major blunder by doing that check and I am clearly winning now with two Queens. But there are still a lot of pieces on the board. Red has a lot of pawns that he could queen, so we've got to do something about that. And luckily, with green more likely to attack red than to attack me, we should be able to organize something here. Also, looking at the points, uh, green starts to realize that if green, if we can wipe out red and green can get as many points as I do, then green may have a chance, whereas if they attack me, I'm well ahead on points now. They, it could go either way, but there's, it's certainly worth looking at the points now. So I was happy to swap off a piece with red because I figure that helps green to attack red and it slows down red's pawns long enough for us to deal with them. If we'd let red get a couple more moves into the center with those pawns, it could have been really tricky. Now, how do I continue the attack? What can we attack that's vulnerable at the moment? Mm, I'm a bit worried about using up my time here. I decide to defend my pawn, even though it's only a pawn. Um, it was, if that pawn falls, more pawns may fall. The base of your pawn chain is worth protecting, more so in four-player chess than normal chess. Pawn chains are very useful because they, the, the back pawn lends its strength to the front pawn. It's like those kung fu things where you, know, you get all these people pushing on somebody, but the opposite of that. This, this really works. The pawn at the back actually transfers its strength through the pawn chain to the pawn at the front. So red's pawns are nice and strong and safe at the moment, but luckily green's managed to reach the center with his. Um, so I took the opportunity to check red. I'm, I'm just, I think it's my job to check red so that green can keep taking things. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do there, but I had to make a move and I thought I'd... I don't want to let Green get away with everything, so I thought I'd attack one of Green's pawns just to... You've got to keep both of them busy. You can't let one of them get freedom, free reign to do whatever he wants. Now that's an interesting choice. I think that's a bad move by Green. It sort of swaps off all Green and Red's pawns and I'm very happy about that. Um, so I'm getting more confident now that I'm probably going to win this because so far since I since since the guy on my left died, um, red's become weaker. Both red and green have lost all their pawns. Although that's an interesting move by green, and 
I'm not sure red red allows me to recapture that without losing my bishop which is probably a bad choice I mean I may have chosen to give red my bishop in return for that queen anyway I guess red just was worried that his queen would get swapped off by green if if I didn't take it now I've lost the base of my pawn chain unfortunately but it's been worth it for everything else that's happened I decide to swap my rook for green's bishop because I've decided that green is now a bigger threat than red and that green also had to be distracted and I had the feeling red might miss that that pawn was defended I don't think he intended to give me his knight there and I wouldn't have given up that pawn for nothing but for a knight yeah at this stage of the game uh, what have we got now you know red's running out of pawns and well he's got five but three of them are defending his king and the other two I'm going to go for and green well green hasn't got any pawns except the ones in front of his king now green probably should have pinned my bishop to my queen when he had the chance here I reckon it would have been very annoying because I can't defend my bishop with my pawn and that pin would have been annoying so I decide to bring my bishop back out of the line of five when in doubt put your pieces on squares where they're not likely to be attacked or pinned or forked or just piece safety I mean king safety is extremely important queen safety is somewhat important but even piece safety is more important than in normal chess and luck is of course more important than in normal chess and blunders happen more often than in normal chess because you, you've got a time limit and you've also got now my question is what do I do now well there's a pawn there I can take but if I do I'll lose my pawn so I make this move which the only intention of that really although it does make my queen safer was to be able to take the pawn there with my queen as I do without losing my pawn to the red rook that was attacking it so it's very nice I've just picked up one of red's pawns if I get the other one I'll have a, another pawn I can queen and I think we've now come to an agreement where Green's decided that Green will attack Red because it's a hell of a lot easier than attacking me and Green will then come second uh, I believe that's what the rest of the game is about I don't think much more happens Red's got some pieces to defend here it's really hard for him when we're both attacking at once his bishop's on pre now so he defends that uh, but then he has this problem where he, his knight's tied up defending his rooks and Green decides to do the dirty work over that side gets five points for his queen which is only worth one point and at this stage you can tell from the point score that unless I did something stupid or Green did something really stupid uh, Red's going to come second well, I mean I mean come second after of the three he's going to how do you say that um, yellow has already come last red is going to come second last and there's just the mopping up to do really so what else haven't I talked about in the way of strategy here um, so I, I decide to offer red one of my queens in return for another nine points because at this stage um, if I get another nine points I'll be so far ahead of green that it would I feel comfortable allowing that I'm about equal with green and material I have a pawn I can queen whereas green doesn't so and there's a crazy move by red but I guess he got really desperate realizing he was about to die and decided to get another point which is I don't know I think it was spite check really especially when I reply with check and get five more points which just it's another nail in red's coffin really and I actually get to deliver the mate again here we go guess what the queen is pinned to the king so if I can check with something else I don't check with that queen 
Oh, no, 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 no. There's a better move than that. We just play queen to there, and that's it. Red's dead. So I'm now uh, more than 20 points ahead, and I decide to claim the win, because once you're more than 20 points ahead of the last person, um, you can claim a win. And that was it. Oh, no, green played one more move, and then I claimed the win. So I hope that I've mentioned a few strategies there that you haven't thought of. Opening strategy I'd like to talk more about in another game because there I haven't figured out an opening that I'm really happy with yet. But I've certainly found quite a few openings that I'm unhappy with and traps and things. And um, anyway, we'll see that in a future video.